You look at images of clouds and maybe all of a sudden, every time I look at clouds, I'm seeing, oh, that's brain anatomy. Whatever you're hyper-focused on is going to be the thing that you're going to try and interject into, you know, every, every, everything you're looking at. And I have thought about that. And I think um, some of it that I realized is, is that uh, there are multiple instances. If it was just the Venus of Willendorf, then you'd only have one that to stand on. But there's, there's multiple ones of them. And there's other Venus figurines that, to me, just look like female bodies. I can't say that they're necessarily brain stem or look like brain anatomy. Um, the ones that we do show in, in the series, I, I feel like, are look like brain stems to me. You and do you a remarkable job. It. You do a really remarkable job, especially with the case of the Ishtar statue, where you acknowledge that, yes, bulbous hips have always been around, and maybe bulbous hips are synonymous with fertility, but you know, you don't often see these big, crazy, bulbous shoulders that happen to correspond yeah. exactly with the thalamus. And, the, um, and so you've done a well, really good job. Well, really you don't see that in human beings, though. Yeah, I mean, never, like, that, yeah I mean, you, you never see that. Even if you see an obese person, they don't have these like they don't have like elephantitis of the of the yeah. shoulders. Like, it's not it's that's not a feature. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I was the other thing I was going to say is like we've only really presented in this um, the first series the visual confirmations. You you can then get past confirmation bias um, when you get into the the mythology and the stories behind Inanna yeah. and the stories behind Ishtar and the stories behind Artemis and the story the mythology and the symbolism. When you get into the the symbolism of those characters that that it, are the statues are made of, they also tie into um, aspects of physiology. 